again everyone and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, February 15th edition of Alaska Weather Tuesday 2022. I'm David Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. First weather graphic here should be hazardous weather and it's hazardous weather. Wind chill warning continues up along the Arctic coast through Wednesday morning for uh, Gusty winds and temperatures well below zero, resulting in wind chill temperatures to 70 degrees below zero. Then there's a wind chill advisory out for the central Arctic coast there. Uh, for tonight uh, into Wednesday morning, for wind chills of 55 degrees below zero, so lighter winds there, obviously. And then wind chill advisories also for the northwest coast, Point Hope, uh, Cape Lisbon, and down to Kivalina, Red Dog Dock areas, uh, as well as the uh, Bering Strait Coast and the St. Lawrence Island area and Eastern Norton Sound, Norton Bay, uh, Stebbins, St. Michael, on up into those areas, wind chill advisories. And those are out through Wednesday night for uh, wind chills to uh, 40 to 55 degrees below zero. Then farther to the south there, Nunavak Island, Cusquam Delta Coast, eastward across the southern Cusquam Valley, Antioch, into the uh, Susitna Valley, Western Cook Inlet area. That's a snow advisory for the next system coming in with snow and uh, blowing snow, especially for the Yukon or the Cusquam Delta will be seeing the gusty winds of 35 miles an hour, but across that entire area from Nunavak Island to uh, the Susitna Valley, Valley, look for anywhere from one to nine inches of snow uh, for tonight. Late, actually, that kicks into effect late tonight, about 3 a.m. and continues through uh, Wednesday, through tomorrow into tomorrow afternoon then letting up in the evening but uh, more snow coming in some of that uh, like today could be mixed with freezing rain or drizzle at times and possibly even just plain rain because right on the arctic front frontal boundary and uh, so systems continue to move eastward along that boundary kind of nudging north and south there so look for a mixture of precipitation in that advisory area actually but anywhere from one to nine inches of snow is currently in the forecast <clears throat> Going on to satellite imagery, you can see the moisture streaming from south to north, then takes a turn to the east and moves from east to west across southern Alaska. That's warm air coming up and then dri driving eastward there as it sort of collides with the very cold air up over the northern interior. Afternoon temperatures, especially north of the Ala Brooks Range there across the north slope of the Arctic Coast in the lower to mid minus 30s for the mid to late afternoon readings today and uh, below zero north of the Alaska Range. We can see a system pulling northward there over the eastern Aleutians, the low center in the frontal boundary, bringing gusty winds and uh, moderate amounts of rain, 12-hour uh, amount over a cold bay of about uh, six-tenths of an inch with 30 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts there. Also some gusty winds, Cape Newenham, normally windy area there, seeing winds gusting 35 miles an hour out of the east. And areas of snow, freezing rain, freezing drizzle, and just plain rain across southern Alaska there, uh, mostly from the southern Sitna Valley on down. But uh, Iliamna picking up two to five inches of snow and uh, they got like 35 or so on the ground there. The Nana up in the interior, some moisture getting up north of the mountains there. Uh, over toward Delta Junction, seeing one to three inches of snow and also moisture sliding eastward into the uh, panhandle, heaviest amount, only a third of an inch, that's Sitka, but kind of a general area of light precipitation across much of the southeast coast today. Only 400s of Juneau in the last 12 hours, but again, Cold Bay picking up about six tenths of an inch in that same time period with that 996 millibar low in Falls Pass, about half an inch, and uh, breaking out, seeing some sunshine this afternoon at ADAC with temperatures rising in the mid 40s there, and then that 978 millibar low pulling westward now as the next system, the 952 low, which is really a pretty intense storm, pulls northward. We'll see tonight that'll bring gale and possible storm force winds into the central Aleutians, but the center weakening coming down about 967 millibars. We've got the low center there pulling, uh, slowly moving north 
uh, actually starting to take a turn to the east as it gets caught up in that westerly flow with the cold air locked in over the central and northern interior. Uh, so look for more moisture to be on the increase. Again, the wind weather advisories from the Cuscombe Delta eastward across the southern Cuscombe Valley into the Susitna Valley and Manuska Valley possibly into the Anchorage area for increasing snow tonight or mixed precipitation could be freezing drizzle again. Really uh, hard to say, just uh, could oscillate north and south that rain snow line. But look for uh, continued damp conditions. Uh, not too heavy on the precipitation over the southern pan, other the southern southeast coast, and then rain becoming a little more showery for Kodiak Island as the frontal boundary pushes east and northward. Stays uh, mostly clear and cold north slope down into the northern interior valleys. Temperatures there, of course, well below zero. Milder with the uh, breezy conditions in that trough. Maybe some blowing, drifting snow eastern Arctic coastal areas. Uh, so the clouds and the snow, light snow, kind of holding the temperatures up there, but still staying well below zero, but warmer than they otherwise would be if it was clear with no wind at all. And for tonight, uh, that storm edges northward out over the Bering Sea, or for tomorrow, Wednesday, and the front pushes eastward. So gusty winds and rain across all the Aleutians into the southern Bering Sea. Pribilofs right on the rain, snow edge there and uh, lighter winds, but tighter up toward, or tighter gradient, more wind over the north and northwest Bering Sea. Look for areas of blowing, drifting snow. Pretty good area of snow across all of southern Alaska, southern half of the state there, right down to a mixed precipitation pattern again for the uh, North Gulf Coast, Bristol Bay, into southern Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, mostly rain at the lower elevations for the Panhandle, and uh, that really lightens up and becomes pretty intermittent down toward uh, Dixon Entrance again and still some snow showers with a couple of troughs just skirting the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline there uh, for a few skips of snow heaviest on the east side. Outlook for Thursday, again that same pattern, uh, Arctic High kind of uh, slides off into the Northwest Territories there but still ridging back across the northern part of the state and uh, but uh, kind of a weakness there allowing troughs to continue to affect uh, the Arctic coast and northern north slope with periods of snow but not much gradient so winds won't be much of a factor there although pressure gradient tightening up over the uh, western Arctic say from Point Lay down to just north of Kivalina so it could get a little gusty on the northeast winds Point Hope Cape Lisburn area and also over the interior tighter gradient uh, as low pressure tracks northward into the southwest interior, 998 millibar low actually forming a wave forming on the frontal boundary Wednesday night, moving into the southwest part of the state Thursday. And the anchor low, the main low, holding back over the Bering Sea. So uh, breezy conditions, showery over the entire Aleutian chain to the Alaska Peninsula. More wind and rain for Kodiak Island. Wind's not all that strong. Rain and snow, mixed precipitation again. In fact, uh, probably changing to more of a rain at sea level with that warm front lifting northward in the south to southeast wind flow. Downslope conditions will probably dry it out or kill the precipitation on the eastern slopes of the Chugach Mountains there, say from Anchor Point northward to Palmer. Precipitation should be pretty sparse with this pattern, but heavier on the upslope areas. and. Uh, still unsettled over the southeast coast. And for lows tonight, anywhere from uh, 25 to 45 below for the north slope uh, into the Brooks Range, otherwise 35 to 45 below for the Yukon Flats area, Beaver, Chuck Yitzik, Fort Yukon and those areas with uh, temperatures below zero, 12 below for Fairbanks, 25 below for Tanana, four above there for McGrath, about the same for Nikolai, 24 for Sleep Mute, but lows in the mid to upper 30s there on the south side of the Arctic front for the Bristol Bay area. Same thing for the Alaska Peninsula, Eastern Aleutians, mid 30s Central Aleutians, mid 20s in the Pribilofs, and anywhere from lower 30s Northern Panhandle to near 40 around Sitka to Mount Edgecombe, mid to upper 30s elsewhere for the southeast coast. Highs for Wednesday afternoon, below zero north of the Alaska Range or the northern half of the state, although Fairbanks forecast to push up to five above and then the lower teens for Delta Junction down the Northway and Toke, upper 20s Copper River Basin, 30 to 40 southern Alaska, south of the Alaska Range there, 42 at Homer, Seldovia, and 37 at Seward, 40 to 45 for the southeast coast, 40 to 45 Kodiak Island, lower 40s Bristol Bay around King Salmon, and uh, 40 to 42 for the Alaska Peninsula and the central Aleutian areas. Otherwise, uh, staying a shade below freezing for the Pribilof Islands, 
Farther north, St. Lawrence Island, below zero the entire day, upper 30s out west for Shimmy and at two. Lows for a Thursday morning, anywhere from 30 to 45 below again, north slope into the northeastern valleys. A little warmer, uh, as you can see. Uh, nowhere actually getting flagged to be 40 below or colder, but minus 37 for the Yukon Flats. 38 below at Arctic Village, about the coldest spot. And near zero there for the northern Cuscombe Valley, but Fairbanks falling back to 16 below. And uh, 20s, south central Alaska to lower 30s down toward Homer and Soldovia. And uh, upper 30s to near 40 for the Panhandle for your overnight lows. And mid 30s staying above freezing for the entire Aleutian chain, but lower 20s for the Perbolofs, followed by highs near freezing, St. Paul, St. George, pushing zero for Savunga and Gamble, and right around zero in the central interior as you head south, of course, warmer, 30 to 40, southern Alaska near Kodiak Island, 40 to 45 again for the Panhandle, and uh, 5 to 15 above for the upper Tanah Valley from Fairbanks eastward to uh, Token Northway. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather, IFR Central Arctic Coast, VFR south of the Brooks Range to the Yukon River, then marginal VFR becomes IFR across southern Alaska there, extending all the way across the Bering Sea, including the Perbolofs, Nunavak Island, right across Cook Inlet and the Cuscombe Valley, Kenai Peninsula, then angling southeastward and then sweeping into the southern coast of the Panhandle. And IFR, another batch there over the central Aleutians from Kiska Island eastward to just west of Nikolsky. And we'll see for the uh, afternoon, that kind of merges with the area to the north out there. So widespread area of IFR out over the central southern Bering Sea, but north of St. Matthew Island, St. Lawrence Island through the Bering Strait, Seward Peninsula, Norton Sound to Kotzebue and the northwest coast as well as the Noatak Valley, all VFR. And that extends eastward along and north of the Yukon River Valley and the uh, Southern Brooks Range. North of the mountains though, marginal VFR with IFR, Eastern Arctic Coast, and a lot of IFR across Central and Southern Alaska, right up uh, including all the Tanana Valley, most of the Copper River Basin, all the North Gulf Coast to about Resurrection Bay. Marginal VFR, southwestern and southwest Kenai Peninsula, Kamishak Bay, and Kachemak and Kamishak Bays, Cook Inlet, IFR for the Panhandle. And moving on, that improves uh, by Thursday morning for the southeast coast with VFR from about Sitka to Port Alexander in across uh, Prince of Wales Island, otherwise marginal VFR. And IFR, kind of a narrow band hanging up there from uh, Kinnick Arm, actually it looks like the Chugach Mountains there near t just north of Turnigan Arm, up across the Manuska Valley, Talkeetnas, and on up into the Tanana Valley. That expands quite a bit as you head southwest, covering just about all the Cuscombe Valley and covering all of the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, the Togiak Bay down to the Alaska Peninsula, and a lot of IFR central and southern Bering Sea, uh, central and western Aleutians as well, IFR eastern <clears throat> Arctic coast. Marginal VFR for the Arctic coast, Thursday afternoon. North Slope, not too bad, uh, becoming VFR in the Brooks Range in the VFR zone. But uh, south of the mountains, marginal VFR becomes IFR, southern Seward Peninsula there, and it's pretty solid across the western part of the interior, right on down across Bristol Bay, the Aleutian Range, Kodiak Island, Cook Inlet, mostly IFR, some marginal VFR for the western central Kenai Peninsula, Turnigan Arm, Manuska Valley, Copper River Basin look marginal, Prince William Sound, IFR. Eastern North Gulf Coast, all of the Panhandle, marginal VFR. Passes Zanatuvik and Adigan, both uh, mostly marginal for the day on Wednesday. Lake Clark and Merrill, mostly IFR throughout the day. Same forecast for rainy IFR, windy IFR. Isabel IFR, either entrance and Mentasta uh, IFR. Mostly IFR for Tanina and Portage. Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels uh, at the surface, right across the Susitna Valley, back down to Nunavak Island to the west, and then Northern Copper River Basin or Central Copper River Basin, give or take there. Two to 4,000 feet there across the Kenai Peninsula, and two to 6,000 feet down to across the southwest part of the state, 8,000 feet just south of Kodiak Island. Icing, considerable moderate rime icing between four to 12,000 feet there, South Central Alaska. North Gulf Coast, Prince William Sound into the northern Cuscombe Valley, 
and then some uh, heavier icing with the next frontal boundary there pushing into Unmac Island and into the southern Bering Sea. Jet stream, cold upper low there off the eastern Beaufort Sea coast associated with that 105 knot westerly flow there across the eastern Brooks Range and another upper low or trough there over the uh, Tanana Valley. To the south of that, we've got westerlies 100 to 120 knots from the uh, Yukon Cuscom Delta across the Kenai Peninsula to Yakutat, and southerlies, south southwesterlies, about 110 knots over the eastern Bering Sea, Pribilofs, Fox Islands. 3,000 or 9,000 feet west, 65 or 60, 75 knots right across uh, Cook Inlet, the Kenai Peninsula, into the Panhandle, south southwest, 60 knots. Eastern Aleutians and the Southwest Bering Sea, Southeast Bering Sea, 3,000 feet, about the same pattern. Uh, 40 knot southwesterlies, Cook Inlet, and then northeast 35 knots, Central Interior pick up to 50 to 60 knots over the northern Bering Sea out of the east. And for the turbulence, moderate chop, St. Lawrence Island, Adak, Atka, and the Alaska Peninsula, light to isolate moderate chop, surface 5,000 feet for the panhandle. <music> So the sun, looking here from the ground, seems very constant and quiet. But actually when we look at it from space, we can see it's quite turbulent and active. Space weather is activity on the sun and in the near Earth space that can affect our technological infrastructure and society. The sun is constantly spewing out a stream of particles called the solar wind that goes out into the solar system. And it affects us here near Earth where we're protected by a magnetic field. The interaction between the solar wind and the magnetic field can cause space weather. The Carrington event is the largest storm we've seen in recorded history when we're looking at space weather. But Every solar cycle, which repeats about every, every 11 years, one estimate estimates that there's a 10% chance of getting a large storm like the Carrington event that could impact us here on Earth. But we see solar storms almost all the time. And these storm storms have an effect on our, our technological infrastructure. Solar storms can cause activity in Earth's atmosphere and magnetosphere that can damage electrical power grids that power our communities, interrupt radio and satellite communications, and can cause our GPS navigation to fail. NOAA is working with its international partners to ensure that we have different vantage points where we can observe space weather. Our space weather observing infrastructure from space includes the, the NOAA Discover satellite, and the NASA A satellite that are stationed upstream of Earth to give us a first buoy measurement of the solar wind. It also includes the ESA NASA SOHO satellite and the NASA STEREO satellite that image the sun and also make coronagraph measurements of the outer atmosphere of the sun, the corona, that can tell us when large explosions happen off the sun. We also observe the sun and the Earth's magnetic field from the geostationary location with NOAA's GOES. So the way we use the space weather information from satellites and from the ground is to be able to make forecasts and predictions, just like we do with, with hurricanes and terrestrial weather. We observe the sun and look for activity and see how it develops. and see if it's going to culminate into a large explosion that can affect us here on Earth. NOAA is working with its international partners to expand our observing capability. We're committed to observing along the Sun-Earth line. So we're gonna do the imaging of the Sun and the upstream buoy measurements of the solar wind along the Sun-Earth axis.
more we understand about the sun, the more we can prepare for it and become, just like we are a weather-ready nation, become a space weather-ready nation. And as we look forward to humans exploring out into the solar system and advancing our space commerce activities, space weather becomes more and more important. Here at the Space Weather Prediction Center, we monitor space activity as it's occurring back at the sun, and then we issue out a forecast as well as alerts, watches, and warnings as activity is occurring. A typical space weather event would start with a solar flare back at the sun. That solar flare is short-lived and produces fairly short-lived impacts as well, basically impacting communications on the daylit side of the Earth. However, some solar flares are also associated with a coronal mass ejection or an eruption of plasma that's blast off the sun and out into space. As forecasters, it's our job to determine if that cloud of plasma is moving towards Earth and if it comes towards Earth, what the potential impacts may be. Those impacts can range from a fairly low level storm that may produce the aurora a little bit farther south than usual or can range up into fairly significant magnetic disturbances that don't happen very often but when they do they can impact technologies and infrastructure here on Earth. We provide information to lots of different user groups from airlines to the electric power grid to emergency managers, aviation, satellite community, lots of different customers. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at the coastal water forecast, we've got small craft advisories there for the central and south coast of the Panhandle for southwest winds, 25 to 30 knots. These are on 13 feet. Lighter winds on the north coast from a southwest direction at 20 knots. And small craft advisories for the northern inner channels for southeast winds at 25 knots with seas at 5 feet. While uh, Stevens Passage looking at southeast winds 20 knots, but with gale force gusts of 35 knots, seas will be around four feet there. And light winds from the southeast for Clarence Strait, southern inner channels, only 10 knots with seas as high as six feet. Moving on to the outlook for Thursday, we've got uh, lighter winds along the coast, still southwest, but about 20 knots with 15 foot seas. Even lighter winds in store from the north coast, south 15 knots. Lincoln Isle Glacier Bay, southeast winds 20 knots, Stevens Passage southeast at 15, and Clarence Strait coming up a little bit southeast at 20 knots with seas running three to four foot, three to four feet across the entire inside channel area. And for the Prince William Sound Zone, northeast winds tomorrow 25 knots with four foot seas. And small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast, winds due south 30 knots, seas 11 to 13 feet. And for the Barren Islands, winds will be southwest at 30 knots. Small craft advisories for Kamishak Bay. East winds 25 knots. Southwest 25 for Southern Cook Inlet. North of the Forelands a little lighter. South winds 20 knots. Southwest at 20 knots. They'll swing around to the northeast uh, for Northern Cook Inlet on Thursday. Only at 15 knots though. Southern Cook Inlet winds will be east at 20 knots. Kamishak Bay south at 20 knots. Barren Islands southwest winds 30 knots. And small craft advisories for the North Gulf Coast, south winds 25 to 30 knots, seas 11 to 13 feet. Prince William Sound, east winds 20 knots, seas 4 feet. Kodiak Island, southwest winds 30 knots. Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, small craft advisories, southwest winds 30 knots. And from Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak, southwest winds 25 knots with seas as high as 17 feet. I'll look for Thursday, Kodiak Island, south to southwest winds, 30 to 35 knots. Gale warnings uh, from Sitkanak to Castle Cape, southwest 35 knots, seas 14 feet. Small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula, south to southwesterlies, 25 to 30 knots. Brisk wind advisories for Bristol Bay, south winds, 25. On Alaska Island, south winds, 30 knots, seas 8 to 16 feet. Unmak Island, south to southeast at 30 knots, 12 to 20 foot seas there. 
scale warnings for Adak and Atka, south to southeast, 35 to 40 knots on those winds, and east 35 knots for uh, Amchitka Island. Kiska to Shimia, winds will be northeast to 25 knots and seas at about 14 feet. And for Thursday, Shimia to Kiska, north winds 25 knots, otherwise west to southwest winds 30 to 35 knots, all the way from Kiska Island to Unalaska Island, with seas running anywhere from 12 to 20 feet. And for the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, winds will be southwest at 30 knots. North of Nunavak Island, Yukon Delta Coast, northeast at 30 knots, and that'll extend out across St. Matthew Island. Perloff Islands, east winds 20 knots, seas at about 6 feet. Gale warnings for St. Lawrence Island and Norton Sound for uh, north to northeast winds at 35 knots. And for the day on Thursday, Norton Sound, Brisk wind advisories there, northeast at 30, but gale warnings continue for the St. Lawrence Island zone. Northeast 40 knots, northeast 40 knot gales also for St. Matthew Island. Yukon Delta Coast, brisk wind advisories for northeast winds 25 knots. Small crowd advisories for the Permaloffs for southeast winds at 25 knots. Brisk wind advisories, eastern Beaufort Sea coast tomorrow uh, for 25 knot winds, otherwise the central coast, uh, west northwest, 15 to 20 knots. Cape Beaufort to Wales, north winds 20 to 25 knots. And for Thursday, Wales to Cape Beaufort, brisk wind advisories, north winds 25 to 30 knots. Much lighter and more variable winds for the western and central Arctic coast down to 10 knots. And uh, a little breezier on the east side there, west southwest 15 to 20 knots. For tonight, it'll be breezy with uh, areas of light snow flurries, maybe some fog, possible blowing drifting snow for the Arctic coast. It's a trough clipsy area there moving from east to west, otherwise high pressure cold temperatures, lows in the minus 40s over the north slope into the northern interior, south of the Brooks Range, milder and snowier, cloudy and wetter for southern Alaska. And the next big storm pushing into the Aleutians with gale force winds and rain will slowly push in toward the Fox Islands. Areas of snow over interior Alaska is at low tracks eastward and northeastward. And for Thursday. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>